Boom! Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So, welcome to today's training video where you'll learn how to trade forex candlestick patterns the correct way. Okay? So, I will say, uh, the thing I see with a lot of traders, right, is that they trade forex candlestick patterns in isolation. Right? What this means is that, for example, they, they flip open their charts, flip open their charts, they see a bearish engulfing pattern, and then they go short. Or, for example, they spot a bullish hammer, they go long. And trust me, if you do this long enough, you realize that you know you will be losing money over time, right? So in today's video, I just want to break it down to you on how you, sh you should go about right trading forex candlestick patterns, right? I will share with you the one thing which I think is it's so important that ninety five percent of traders ignore, right? This one thing would actually help you identify strength and weakness in the market, right? Also, I walk you through on how to actually trade forex candlestick patterns the correct way by actually you know focusing on two other factors before you even look at the candlestick pattern itself, right? So all this and more in today's video, I'll see you there. Okay, so whenever you trade candlestick patterns, right? I want you to pay attention to two things, right? Two things, right? Number one is what I call time, and number two is what I call confluence okay so let's have a look at time right so often right you see traders they trade candlestick patterns they only pay attention to these four things the open high low and close right i would say they just pay attention to the candlestick pattern itself right they don't look at time but if you take into consideration the time element you realize that you know it gives you a better understanding a better read on what is the current sentiment of the markets right and in fact it also lets you identify strength and weakness Right, that may not be too obvious to the other traders out there. So let me explain. Let's say, for example, this is the chart of gold. Right. So let me let me share with you. Right. So over here, from this candle over here, one, two, and three. In three days, right, it has pushed price lower from this high to this lows over here by sixty-three dollars. In three days, impressive, very impressive. And then look what happened. Right. Perhaps uh, the, the, sh the short sellers took their profits and maybe buyers came in and pushed price higher. Perhaps this is an area of you know support. So price then rallied higher. And if you look at the time element, it took them 21 days. 21 days. And they couldn't even push price back towards this high over here. After 21 days. Cannot do it. Whereas the sellers in 3 days, they pushed price lower by $63. So what is this telling you? If you ask me, right, it's a sign that the sellers are in control, right? Three days is all they need to push price lower by $63. But for the buyers, for those who are long, after 21 days, they have difficulty, you know, moving price beyond, I think, even $60. So it's a sign to you that, you know, clearly the one who is in control, the one who has power are the sellers, right? Okay, so moving on. Okay, so moving on, right? Now that you understand how to actually actually identify strength and weakness, I want to talk about confluence, right? Confluence is a very important concept, right? It doesn't matter whether you are trading forex candlestick pattern, the RSI, oscillator, moving average, you know, etc. You want to have confluence whenever you're trading, right? Because if you think about this, right? If you, let's say you're looking for a, a wife or a husband, right? If you're a female, you're looking for a husband. If you're a man you're looking for a, a wife, right? You're not going to marry the person based on, you know, uh, for example, on the on their looks only, right? You want to look at their looks. You want to look at, you know, how they behave, their personality, their character, you know, how they, they, they treat you, right? What is their background? And maybe, you know, what is the environment that they are being brought up in, all right? All these are factors that comes into play, right? You don't just look at the looks, well, okay, maybe maybe some of you you know they do that just based on looks, but I would say generally most of us when we choose a spouse, we look at array of factors, right? A multitude of factors before we come to a decision, and this is the same for trading, right? We don't just base a buy or sell trading decision based on just on candlestick pattern because if you think about it, does it make sense, right? You don't just put a buy sell decision based on a candlestick pattern you see on the chart. 
right? Because this is like marrying someone based on just one factor, like maybe just on his uh, his looks or maybe just on the way he treats you. No, right? You want to look at a multitude of factors and this is the same in trading, right? So this is what I mean by confluence, looking at a few factors together before you come up with your buying and selling decision. So what are the things I look for in confluence? Number one is the trend. Number two is the value. And number three is the trigger. Okay, so trend, I think, I believe is pretty self-explanatory, right? If it's an uptrend, I'll look to long. If it's in a downtrend, I look to short. If it's in a range, then I can either go long or short. Okay, simple. And value is, again, a pretty simple concept, right? For example, support and resistance, they are an area of value because you want to buy low, sell high. You can long support, you can sell resistance, right? Similarly, you can use trend line, right? Or you can use, you know, channel, you can use moving averages to help you identify areas of value, right? So there are different ways to actually, you know, define your area of value. So this is something that, again, is uh, pretty much differ from trader to trader, right? And the last thing is what is called the trigger, right? The, the, the specific price pattern that leads you to buy or sell. And this is where, you know, your candlestick pattern comes into play, okay? So let me share with you a few examples. So you look at this chart over here, right? Let's see how confluence comes into play. In fact, I, I, you don't even need to know what pair, what time frame this is. This is pretty much universal across any markets, any time frame. So one thing we can see right here, right now, is number one, the trend is down. So if the trend is down, what do you want to do? Long or short? Short, right? You want to short, right? I hope you say short, right? I mean, if you're on a long, I'm not saying you can't do it, but I, don't know, I prefer to go with the trend, right? So number two, what's the second thing? Value. How do we identify value? As I've mentioned, there are a few ways to go about it. Moving average trend lines, channel support resistance. But in this case, we will be looking at resistance because you can see that the market has actually, you know, retraced. Okay, I'm going to try to get as straight as possible, right? Retrace towards this area of resistance. This is an area of resistance, right? You can see price coming towards an area of resistance. And number three, what do we have, right? We have this bearish candlestick pattern, right? I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, right, the name of this is called Dark Cloud Cover. You know, you know Japanese candlesticks sometimes have really interesting names, so if I'm not wrong, it's called Dark Cloud Cover. Okay? So, yeah, we have this, uh, the trigger as well. So, in this instance, can you see how things are lining up? Number one, we have the trend. Number two, we have this price at an area of value, at this resistance. And number three, we have the trigger to go short. Okay? So, this is how, you know, you want to be trading candlestick patterns when the story lines up, right? You don't want to just see a, a candlestick pattern on your chart. Like for example, say you see this bearish, sorry, this bearish candle over here. Ah, sorry, I messed that up, right? So this one over here, this bearish candlestick pattern over here, and then you go short. You, you don't want to do that, right? You want to have the, the case for your story that builds up to the, the trade itself, okay? So this is one example of, you know, trend, value, and trigger. Right, so let's have a look at another example. So again, this time round, what do we have? Number one, the trend is down. Number two, are we trading at an area of value? I believe we have, right? This 50 period moving average over here is an area of value because you see price respecting it once, right? Uh, I think this is twice, thrice, and right now, you know, it's still, hey, sorry, this, yeah, thrice. Okay, so once, twice, and thrice. Right, so at this area over here, right, you're just simply now looking for a trigger, right? Because your, your area of value is at this 50 period moving average. So the third thing you're looking for is just an entry trigger. So do you have any entry trigger over here? Well, if you ask me over here, this basically shows indecision in the market. The forex candlestick pattern are showing you indecision. So that's why your candlestick patterns are getting smaller and smaller, right? You know, doji and stuff like that. So you can see the candlestick patterns are getting much pretty much smaller and smaller. So an entry trigger could just simply be trading the break of this mini range over here, right? like this, the break of this mini range over here. That could be your entry trigger, okay? So I hope you know you understand you know, on how you can actually go about trading Forex candlestick patterns. So let's do a quick recap, right, of what you've learned today. Number one, right, I, I want you to take into consideration the time factor. Okay, because, you know, as I've said, right, if you look at the time factor, you will give you clue into who is, who is in control of the market. 
Number two, right, we talk about confluence, where I shared with you that you don't want to trade candlestick patterns in isolation, right? You want to look at a trend, you want to look at whether it's at an area of value, and then you look for the trigger, and the trigger could be in the candlestick patterns, right? Like maybe a, a pin bar, an engulfing pattern, or doji, a series of doji, which I've shared with you earlier. So when you look at these two factors over here, the confluence factor and the time factor, right? Trust me, I believe your read on candlestick patterns will improve, right? And, and I won't be surprised, right, if your, your trading gets better as well, okay? So that's all I have for you in today's video, right? If you've enjoyed it, right, please hit the subscribe button below and you'll always be updated to the new videos that I publish. And if you want to learn more, I would recommend coming to this page over here, right? Tradingwithrainer.com slash price action trading. In fact, just come to this link over here, this trading guide, the price action trading strategy guide, right? I cover in more details about price action trading, forex candlestick patterns and stuff like that. So for example, I share with you, you know, four stages of the market, how to tell when the market is trending, ranging, you know, forget about memorizing candlestick patterns, just focus on these four things, advanced candlestick patterns that nobody talks about. So yeah, it's all free on this page over here. So if you're interested, I'll just put a link below as well so you can access it, right? And, uh, you know, to, to check it out, right? And I hope, I really hope it improves your trading. So with that, I wish you good luck and good trading. Talk to you soon.